So we have our last speaker from Flashbots, Tomasz. He's um, he'll be talking about cross-domain PBS interfaces for Suave. Hi everyone, uh, it's Tomasz here from Flashbots, and you already know the title. Um, maybe just to, to explain the, the hat that I'm wearing now. So I've been working with Flashbot since 2021 as a, as a mate, so more like general individual contributor, uh, working on most, uh, mostly on the uh, late designs of the, sorry, uh, of the MEV GAF, so the uh, solution in the proof of work world. Uh, and then working on the early ideas of how MEV Boost should work in the uh, proof of stake Ethereum. So transferring the world of MEV, minor extractable value, to the world of something like validator extractable value, which we still call MEV because the name stays. Uh, and nowadays I work on Suave architecture collaboration research. There's many more people working on Suave, and I'm uh, not leading Suave in any way. And I'll be talking about some of the exploration of like one of the components of Swap that, uh, that is important, which is how to connect Swap to multiple chains. And many of you probably never heard of Swap or even MEV, but uh, Swap is the idea of uh, creating like a universal auction for everything related to the how user wants to trade and how this is delivered. Uh, in a fair way, how the value that the user creates for trading on blockchains is delivered back to the users through the one of the free ideas of what Flashbots wants to deliver. So it's uh, illuminate, democratize, distribute. So illuminate the world of, uh, of the mempools, private mempools, the MEV trading, understand, educate, uh, democratize access to allow uh, small players to participate in the markets in the same way as the large players uh, and distribute, so bring the value back to those who actually initiate the value creation through the trades, through signatures of the trades. Uh, and also, it's a bit of a disclaimer, it's one of the building open presentations, so it's not defining what Swap will look like. Uh, it may define how one of the components of Swap will look. So I wouldn't like to say that this is necessarily something that's uh, fully agreed on internally at Flashbots. It has been reviewed so far, we've discussed it, uh, but it might be that we'll go different route for various reasons. Uh, Flashbots does care a lot about whether any solutions that we publish finally as, uh, as something that we're gonna deliver uh, carry all the understanding of like how they affect the market, so whether they potentially have some undesirable side effects of really breaking the markets or further centralizing the markets instead of democratizing the centralizing the markets. And there's particularly one aspect here that I'll show you that is still unsolved but has to be solved before we say it makes sense uh, to, to contribute to this democratization. Um, so this is once again to remind Illuminate democratize distribute. And so far We've done it through the uh, various tools that uh, show what happens with MEV on chains. So we created dashboards, we created lots of uh, data analytics, transparency reports, we created lots of uh, events where we talk about MEV, about economics of blockchains, uh, about various topics that go maybe slightly behind. We're organizing topics on AI and blockchain. And we participate in a lot of uh, events. And democratization distribution, so this is for the tools like, as I mentioned, MEV Boost, so the solution for proposal builder separation in the Ethereum proof of stake world, uh, and also MEV Share, which is in the beta stage, a product that shows how to, how to pay back to the users the value that they create through the wallet integration of the user order flow. So the order flow sharing and uh, and preventing the, the private mempools where the big players start to trade user order flow without users benefiting from that is one of the, one of the main areas of interest of Flashbots nowadays. Okay, so the solution we talk about today is uh, sweetly, cutely called MEV Garden. 
So you want to move away a bit from the dark forest and create something that uh, is in a way belonging to the module world. It's neatly organized. It's showing how exactly the paths between various components of the system uh, are, leading, are leading users to the right places and leading everyone to the right component integration. So let's create MEV Garden. Uh, and what are design goals for, for this solution? So first of all, we want to uh, create a solution for connecting that unified auction, connecting the SWAV in whatever form it is, whether it's a chain, whether it's a mempool, connecting SWAV to multiple uh, chains, multiple domains. So in the context of, uh, of our analysis of what MEV is, we talk about domains as uh, domains might not be chains, might be centralized exchanges, might be chains, might be some kind of new constructs, some mempools, and so on and so on. Uh, and well, the way we talk now about what, uh, what we'll do for creating blocks on different, uh, on different domains, we talk a lot about shared sequencers nowadays, right? So we talk about radius, talk about other solutions, uh, and we see that there is not yet maybe the full clarity of how exactly the blocks will be constructed on rollups, on layer ones, uh, how exactly the bridging will facilitate all of this, uh, and who exactly will have the responsibility of creating the blocks, and how exactly you will have the possibility as a builder to maybe create, take advantage of those connections and extract MEV across domains. Uh, so, First of all, the solution has to work with shared sequencers, with maybe centralized sequencers on rollups in this transition stage. So we see that many rollups now have uh, centralized sequencers that for the next one or two years will stay, will be the only solution available. When you look at solutions like Starknet, Optimism, and so on, you'll have uh, one entity responsible for selecting transactions and building blocks. We need to support it. Uh, we need to support layer one, so Ethereum, PBS solutions, or anything else that exists when you think about Solana, Cosmos, protocols like Skip, like, uh, like Jito, and so on. Uh, and then we want to make sure that this market is also permissionless and transparent, so uh, any builder, block builder, that would like to create cross-domain MEV extraction solutions should be allowed to join that system. Uh, any, any chain that would like to participate in the system should be able to connect to that tooling. Mm, and everything should be, should be clear and trustless, ideally. So we don't have to have any centralized uh, actors, trusted actors to, to manage that solution. Uh, it should be in line with where protocol at Ethereum goes. So Flashbot still uh, focuses mainly on Ethereum because that's where most of the TVL and the trading activity happens. It's a, it's always a very good basis starting point to show this is where really trading, much of the trading innovation happens. Uh, I want to make sure that if there is some clear direction of why, how we want to improve Ethereum protocol, uh, that we already take it into account. The next two or three years of Ethereum development should be should be consistent with the vision of however we want to do the cross-domain MEV. Um, then, that res respect for the market space of various players, so saying that we don't want to propose a solution that suddenly everyone will see, oh, it's just a, it's just a competing solution. It's something that it's not in line with, with me building a shared sequence or me building a rollup and so on. So we don't want to usurp here any space, we just want to interface, connect uh, what SWAV will, SWAV will be with, uh, with whatever other solutions are being built and delivered to the market. Uh, should be stepped towards SWAV. So like whatever we're building here should be seen as a component of SWAV and not some, some solution to flashbots that's built on the side. So it should be part of the, of the greater vision. Um, and the last part you see, maybe now it's totally unclear, uh, but we want to ask a question that if we create a solution for the cross uh, cross domain extraction that will the largest operators somehow benefit from that solution in a way that will start pushing out the solo stakers. So we're asking once again the same question that we asked for Ethereum proof of stake. In Ethereum proof of stake when we are delivering MEV boost, we would ask a question, does MEV boost solve the problem of a solo staker actually having equal access to, uh, to MEV as the large operator because if 
If no, then large operator captures more and more value over, over time, and all the solo stakers say, oh, I prefer to stake with the pool. So it should be the same here, that, uh, but, but in the case that solo stakers should have equal access to participate in a market of cross-domain, multi-chain extraction. So should, they should be able to team up with other solo stakers. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about maybe the two things that I explained in a moment. We introduce component of like global time and, and some kind of synchronized proposals. And I explained this one because the other ones, I'll assume more or less that, uh, that we know what it is because the depth of what we're explaining is anyway much beyond. So uh, going too much on relay sequence or proposal builders will be too slow. All right, so, so this concept is really very simple, but, but let's explain why we need it. Um, and it, it might be that when you scan all the research and literature or some solutions existed for this, uh, so there's some assumption that either some of idea like this exists, there is assumption that this can be built, uh, either has been built or can be built. It might be that it cannot, but so uh, this is something to explore. Uh, so we want to have a, a chain or any other solution that can look at all the chains that participate in a cross-domain extraction and just uh, order the events across the chains, right? So might be seen as a computer science like difficult thing. Like you have to order all the events on Ethereum, on Polygon, on different rollups and say the block on Polygon happens before the block on Ethereum. So there is a challenge, some synchronization challenge. And uh, we can do that, for example, by creating a separate chain that is like very fast, like maybe mempool style chain based on Narwhal, for example, that doesn't really have any state, but does have just like a list of transactions of events. Because we just need to record the events and maybe build around that some kind of consensus mechanism that will say, hey, these are the observers of all the chains and they commit and they rush to show the events as soon as they happen. So that's what we need. We need the ordering of when the blocks were proposed, when they, and also when some of the announcements from block, uh, block proposers or block builders happen. So here I'm showing the like Ethereum, Starknet, Polygon blocks being introduced, and I know when they happened. And this is potential solution that I just mentioned. Uh, and then I try to introduce some concept of what it means that there is a synchronized proposal. And, and I'm showing like three different approaches because in our discussions we say, well, this is not such a clear, clear definition. We may say that um, like super strict way that the two different blocks are, are synchronized if there is nothing in between them on any of the domains that we are trading on. So I say that here, for example, the Ethereum would be synchronized with the uh, polygon block, so Ethereum X is synchronized with polygon Y block because there's nothing happening between them. So there is no way of kind of like extracting MEV somewhere else from these two chains, but something that's correlated between the two. So I'm trying to make sure that, that I'm limiting the, the time space of events so that no, no extra domain extraction can happen. So I want to say, okay, I'm kind of allowing the opportunity for the trader to say I'm acting on the top of those chains, on the top of the blocks, and, and act before everything else happens. Uh, and here I would even say that, well, uh, the Ethereum is uh, not synchronized with StarkNet because there is a polygon block in between. And when you think about it, it's like overly strict because MEV extraction may happen outside of chains on some decentralized exchanges, uh, new chains keep appearing. So uh, it could be a, a big requirement to say that only we can do something if these two blocks happen exactly after each other. But maybe someone can promise something like that. We'll see why do we need those promise. Uh, so, so I may say that actually the two blocks are synchronized if there is nothing else happening between them within those two domains that I'm talking about. So if there is Ethereum and StarkNet block, then the Ethereum X is synchronized with StarkNet Z, even if, the, even if there is a polygon block in between, because there's no other Ethereum or StarkNet block in between. So I'm saying, okay, these blocks are happening at the same time, synchronized 
happening at the same time. Uh, and and while I don't say that uh, the the polygon Y is synchronized with Ethereum X plus two because there were some other Ethereum and polygon blocks in between. So so they didn't happen at the same time in the sense of timestamps or ordering because there were some other blocks from the same domains happening in between. And uh, this is kind of like minimal idea of like what it means that it's synchronized. That I can even say that like a, a list of all the blocks from the same domain is still considered as like synchronized with the preceding block from another domain. So, so I said that Ethereum blocks X is synchronized really with all the StarkNet blocks that follow, uh, but not if there are both domains happening in between. So, so this becomes a bit like vague, and all of this is like more or less very clear, but we need a definition of saying somehow someone can tell me that they are about to produce blocks on two different domains that are synchronized, and then they choose even according to what definition they are synchronized, so I can understand how much of a promise it is in my way of understanding of how much value I can extract by acting on that promise. And, well, this is the basic reminder. Uh, Ethereum PBS says that we have the, uh, the builder, a block builder, that knows that there will be one block proposed by the block proposer, validator in Ethereum. They know it in advance and in a way act by proposing a block, uh, by building a block, sending it to the relay, and then relay can uh, send it forward to the block proposer for the validator. And the validators choose between the best builders choose where the most value is, and they propose the block that has the most value. And uh, enshrined PBS, so the future of Ethereum, I remember we had this requirement that we have to be in line with the uh, Ethereum protocol direction, says that everything more or less works the same, but there are some crypto economical solutions that say that we can remove the role of the relay, because nowadays the relay is kind of a trusted and expensive to run and not incentivized a component of the whole PBS solution. So here uh, we say in enshrined PBS in Ethereum, this will disappear, relay disappears. So the solution for the MEV garden also has to assume that the relay disappears. And what we actually want to build on MEV garden is this cross domain solution. And we do that by saying that there is some communication back from proposers to builders by creating those announcements by promises that I, as a block proposer on Ethereum and StarkNet, may say, hey, everyone, I'm about to publish blocks that will be synchronized according to one of those definitions. So I can even say according to which definition. They will be the same time, and I'm waiting now for some builders to offer me the bids on multiple blocks in all of those domains that are synchronized and they'll pay me only if those blocks are synchronized. So I make a promise and I announce that promise on the same global events chain. And that promise is slashable in a way that if my blocks are actually not synchronized, then I'll be slashed because I made a promise that I can do that. And it works with uh, shared sequencers because shared sequencers can say, oh yeah, for sure, I know that I'm sequencing on multiple chains because I'm shared sequencer for them. They told me that like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be sequencing here. So I can make this promise over and over again, very safely, knowing that I won't be slashed. And this creates the permissionless access because I'm making the slashable promises and the chain doesn't have to understand, like that the whole solution doesn't have to uh, understand upfront whether this is, uh, this is true, whether my promise is true by definition. The entire solution doesn't have to have a theoretical analysis of, um, of how exactly the shared sequencer works, of, of whether I'm actually a centralized sequencer or layer one proposer. I don't have to understand the ordering on the Ethereum proposers and so on. Because the only thing that I require is that whoever decides to participate in the solution makes announcements and they're slashable. So any Brock builder that will participate to act on this promise knows that there is some, some slashing level. And the slashing can be set arbitrarily high, either through some, uh, some uh, specific crypto economic design or through the, uh, I don't know, like some restaking solution if they want to use the uh, deposits of the if validation. 
And this proposal may look, for example, like this. I'm saying, uh, this is my proposal ID, some public key on, uh, might be on this global time chain, something where, where it leads to deposit somewhere. Maybe I'm depositing on Ethereum, maybe somewhere. It must, must be some chain where I can deposit the value, right? Maybe the public key that is related to some uh, restaking, eigenlayer contract or so. And I'm announcing that I make a commitment that on this domain, at this slot ID or block number, uh, this is like maybe the estimate, maybe it's needed. I'm just about to propose and I can list all the domains that I'll be proposing on together and the rules on this. And as mentioned, whoever announces can be a shared sequencer, native sequencer like layer one, uh, can be decentralized, centralized. And uh, actually like if we think about the basics, uh, funny enough, very often we, we confuse the idea of what is shared sequencer, what is decentralized sequencer, because that's totally different concepts, right? Shared sequencer is shared between multiple chains, but it can be still centralized. It can still be operated by one node. But the decentralized sequencer is, is might be for one chain only, but is decentralized as there are multiple parties participating in sequencing. Uh, so this will be supported here. As you see, you can provide any promises. And now we were talking about enshrined PBS as a no relay, uh, no relay component in all of this. So we don't need the relay because we can use any P2P mechanism here for that communication. The same way as enshrined PBS uh, supports some communication through sending messages in the P2P, the same way it can work here. It can use the relay for sending there and back the prop promises and the beats from the block builders, but it doesn't have to. So relay is not needed. And now you can see that in this global time, I can include the announcements and approvals and the beats of block builders. So the, the beads are now cross-chain cross beads of block builders, the same way as now on Ethereum. The builders make a bid. I'll pay you that much for the block to be accepted. And because all of this is on chain, so the slashing against those solutions can happen. So the builders can be slashed, the, uh, the proposers can be slashed against their promises, against their commitments on how to execute them. And why is it a path uh, on path towards SWAF? Because on SWAF, we, we knew already we had some solutions that said, uh, I can make a, a commitment that I'm gonna to pay, I'm gonna pay some money to anyone who manages to successfully execute bid in a synchronized way on multiple chains. So as a as a bidder, as a block builder bid or or some bundle bid of transactions, I could promise that I'll pay if that happens. But I couldn't really do the second part, which is kind of incentivization, slashable commitment from the other side, announcement that this may happen. So the executors were totally uh, like, sure if that happens, they, they knew that I would pay, but I couldn't before bidding, uh, be ha having some, some kind of uh, expectations that this is gonna happen. So it's like a second part of connecting the bidders on multiple domains and the proposers on multiple domains. And that last thing, the thing that is kind of unsolved, but we can think of potential solutions is if, if I'm about to promise that I can do something synchronized across multiple chains, one minute, sorry, then, uh, then I have to be a big builder very often because if I want to build something both on Ethereum and Polygon, then I have to, I have to be a large block builder, large validator, because only then I'll have a lot of synchronized opportunities which means that as a large operator, I'm starting to gain more and more opportunities to capture that MEV. Uh, how can I do that? Well, we can introduce the communication lines and proper auction mechanism between smaller players that will announce that they would like to combine their, their, uh, their proposals with the players on other chains and share the reward. And actually, I think that this auction can, can work and can split the value between the proposers but some questions are also, what happens if one of them fails? Like, who do you slash, really? Because it's not synchronized, but is it fault on Polygon or Ethereum proposer? Uh, so those questions have to be answered before we can propo propose the entire solution, because otherwise it's actually centralizing, it's just enshrining the large operators. 
Thank you so much.